Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lost Links Interactive Reports webinar. Um, today's May 9th. Uh, we are May 19th, excuse me. We are conducting this for about one hour from 11 to 12 today. Uh, my name is Abe Christ, um, Bureau Chief of Student Assessment in the Performance Office today. I'm joined by my colleague uh, in the Performance Office today, uh, Michael Sabados, who's on the call. Um, as well as our partners at uh, DRC, Patrick Deschler and Christine Mitchell. Uh, they will be uh, actually demonstrating the reports um, in a minute. Um, I'm also joined by some of our colleagues on the EL team um, who are panelists on the webinar, uh, Janet Stuck and Megan Alubicki Flick. Um, if they, uh, if we have questions that is in their realm of expertise, I'm sure they will be jumping in too. Um, and then also Michelle Rosado. Michelle is uh, handling all the behind the scenes for the GoTo webinar. Uh, Michelle's in our performance as well office as well. So thank you, Michelle. So uh, a couple guidelines uh, regarding the webinar. Um, please note that everybody is muted. You probably figured that out by now. Um, we are going to be asking questions through the Q&A feature of the webinar tool. Um, and we will try to address questions at several points during the webinar. Um, while DFC is doing their presentation, um, we will stop in the middle for questions and broker questions, and again, at the end of their section, um, and then also at the end of the EdSite section. Um, so there'll really be three opportunities for you to, to ask questions. Again, please use the Q&A feature in the webinar tool if you do have questions. And then for those of you that have colleagues or want to watch it again, um, we will be recording this webinar, and we will be posting this on our uh, assessment EL page uh, probably within the next few days. It takes us a couple days to prepare things and prepare the transcription. So, uh, but it will be up there shortly. So the agenda, um, we're gonna spend just a couple minutes here sort of framing things up, some general information. Um, once that's done, uh, I'm gonna turn the ball over to Patrick and Christine, who are gonna talk about the Last Links Interactive Report System. And again, that's gonna be the bulk of the presentation, probably 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and then afterwards, Michael's gonna take us home uh, talking about EdSite individual student reports. Some of that might be a review for you, but there are also some, uh, some features that we really wanna uh, emphasize or re-emphasize uh, that are out there that, I think every day we learn that people aren't aware of them. So Michael's going to finish the webinar off by spending a few minutes covering those things. So uh, again, in the in, in terms of general information, just a couple things. Um, we want to thank you first off, first of all, for completing the Lost Links Test Administration. Um, we started in early January. Um, we finished on March sixth. Um, so thank you to all of you that. Uh, help to get that done. Um, and shortly after, you, after you, you probably all know at different phases, everybody uh, has been at home receiving remote instruction from then, from that point on. So thank you. Um, we did release the results on the uh, DRC reporting tool on April 22nd. Um, so it's been a few weeks now. Um, we released them as preliminary. And one of the things that we've we had a few questions on why preliminary is because they're really preliminary until they're released officially on uh, ed site and that will happen probably in june maybe late june um but the question is uh, what does preliminary mean there are very very small ways that the data may change student test scores will not change they are accurate um but there there are some uh sometimes where a student was maybe taking a test during, I'll just give you a couple examples, taking a test in a particular district, um, but then we didn't see that student in PSIS and Reg at the end of the test window, that student wouldn't show up in EdSight. Another example would be, there are cases where students takes one, two, three 
tests for a particular subtest and we clean that up. Uh, so the actual scores are good, but there are these very, very minor things that we, we will catch and that's why we call them preliminary at the moment. And then again, as you know, unlike past years, this is the first year for the new interactive, interactive report system. Um, and then a couple other things in terms of general information. Um, there are resources out there to help you with the new reporting tool. We announced it at the November training, the ELAC training at 450 Columbus. Um, and we, there's some information there um, in our PowerPoint that's posted on our, our last links assessment page. We also released when the results were released on April 22nd, we sent out or uh, actually DRC sent out along with their release email, a user's guide. Um, and then the user's guide that's cited here, as well as the training modules we had sent directly to ELAX, I believe on April 30th, a direct email. So you should have these resources now. Um, uh, and they are also posted on the Lost Links uh, assessment page. Um, but again, nothing like a live webinar to kind of dig deeper in these things, and that's why we are here today. So um, thanks uh, for the for tuning in just for the beginning here. I'm going to turn this over now to DRC, the DRC team, Patrick and Christine, who are going to take us through a little bit more uh, deeper dive into uh, the system. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and Abe, I uh, wanted to thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, to the group today. Uh, as Abe mentioned, I'm Pat Dutchler. I lead DRC's technology product management team. I'm joined today by my team member, Christine Mitchell, our senior technical product analyst, who will guide us through a demonstration of the Lost Links Interact report. As the, uh, we do a little handoff in the background here, and before Christine begins, I just wanted to provide some context for what we will see today. Uh, we'll begin with an example of the dynamic nature of the reporting platform. Uh, specifically, we'll take a look at how the system adjusts what is presented on screen based on a user's role, uh, their permissions, and the underlying data uh, they have access to. Christine will then provide a brief overview of each of the loss of reports, starting with the individual results category, followed by summary level results. We will pause uh, for a minute or two uh, in between each of the categories as we uh, shift there to field a few questions and time permitting and also address questions at the end of the session as well. So as Abe mentioned at the outset, uh, please do uh, use the uh, Q&A uh, feature uh, within your uh, GoToWebinar control panel uh, to send questions along the way uh, that the moderator uh, will uh, review and, and tee up for us. One last item uh, that I wanted to mention is that uh, we at DRC continue to enhance and refine the interactive reporting platform for all of our assessment products and programs. So as such, you can expect to see new features and improved functionality released over the next several months that we have been developing uh, this past winter and spring based on uh, feedback uh, from uh, the field. So additionally, one of our objectives uh, is to deliver the best possible customer experience and user experience uh, with our technology. So we're always looking for feedback on and suggestions for uh, the platform, in this case, the interactive reporting uh, in particular. So we also expect uh, in the coming weeks some information on how you can provide uh, more direct uh, feedback uh, and uh, just overall suggestions and thoughts on uh, the platform, again, as we look to uh, deliver the best possible experience we can. With that, I will hand it over to Christine uh, to uh, take a live look at the reporting platform and uh, following the outline that I just provided. Christine, are you uh, on the line? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Great. Wonderful. So I'm going to start by logging in uh, as a teacher user. So when you get into the portal, you'll go to All Applications and Interactive Reports. And the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, just the uh, customized nature of uh, the pre-filters. So I'm going to go to student results first just to showcase this. So when you come in, uh, the system recognizes that I'm a teacher um, and knows what data I should have access to. And it adjusts these pre-filters um, as appropriate. And so right now, um, 
this particular teacher user is only associated to one group and only has one set of forms. So I make a couple clicks. I can choose a, a view and an assessment date and then click go. So I make two selections and I three clicks and then I, I've got access to meaningful data, which will show up here momentarily. And the same could be said for any user that logs in. So for example, if I'm a district user, similarly, it would know uh, who I am and what data I should have access to. So I'm gonna log out and log back in as a district user. All applications, interactive reports. And just to kind of finish that pre-filter thought. You can see that some of these automatically populated because the system knows who I am and there was only one possible option that it could be. So I can change my view and again, select an assessment date and then click go and my reports will pop up. So I'm going to finish the demo and go through all of the reports using this login, but we just wanted to showcase uh, the, uh, the flexibility of the system and uh, how dynamic it is based on who's logged in. So I'm going to switch over. I'll come back to student roster because I know there's interest, uh, a lot of interest in going through that report. I'm going to switch over to batch download quickly and then come back. So with batch download, this is where you're gonna find your PDFs. So your student proficiency report and home reports uh, in English and Spanish. The system knew that I was associated to this district. I can select a school. There was only one exam that I was associated with, one set of forms. I can select an exam date or assessment date, a grade. and then I didn't have any classes. So at this point, you have two options. You can either download the PDF for all of the students uh, in this particular, that meet all these criteria, or you can display those students in a table and make additional selections. I'm gonna display the students in a table. So it found 18 students. If I scroll down, I can see the list of students and I can download the PDF for a particular student, an individual student. I can make a couple selections and download just those that I selected. And there's multiple pages here. I can page over, make an additional selection. I can also change the, item, the number of items that show on a page. So if I displayed 25, I'd be displaying all of my 18 results. And then I can download just those that I've selected. And then let's move over to the students results section. So um, I showed batch download. I'll go through all of the student results uh, reports and then um, we'll pause for Q&A and then I'll move over to the summary results um, reports and then we'll do another Q&A at the end. So also kind of stepping back a little bit, uh, a little lay of the land here. So when you get into interactive reports, uh, you've got your dashboard, uh, which just displays uh, uh, basic text. And then these three tabs here are essentially categories of reports. So there's summary, individual student reports, um, and then the batch download, which is essentially where you get your PDFs. And then there's a quick links over here. Um, in Abe's presentation, there were a couple links there. They're also here inside the portal if you need them. There's the training modules for educators and the user guide. And then once you click into one of these tabs, you have up here what are called pre-filters. So these essentially let us know which report you want and then which data would be helpful as an initial view. So with the uh, student results, there are a number of reports here. We have student roster, longitudinal, reading links, item, and then a student dashboard. 
with the student roster, there are a few views here. So essentially, um, for those of you who are familiar with ORS, um, we've uh, covered off the ORS report options menu with uh, views. So there's default, um, full, strands, and download. Default is at the skills area level and includes uh, scale score and proficiency levels. So we'll go with that one first. Uh, it's automatically populated in my district and exam. And then I just select an assessment date and click go. So once I click go, you'll notice there's another set of filters here. Uh, those just help to narrow down the data even further. So our student roster here is displaying the scale score and proficiency levels for each of the skill areas. And then you'll also notice that the student name uh, is hyperlinked. That links out to the student proficiency report for that student. And this is, it'll open up in a new window and this is a sample report. There's also the ability to uh, download a chart as a CSV, Excel, or PDF. And you can do some additional uh, interaction with this. Um, for example, maybe you wanted to focus on your students who um, scored beginning in speaking. So you have the ability to filter and sort on any column headers. I'll click beginning and done. So now it'll pull up only the students that scored beginning in speaking. So all of these are just beginning. And if I want to get back to that default view that I came in at, I can click this blue arrow in the bottom right corner. Uh, we do have a little bit of color in our table here. Uh, so the proficiency level, um, we have, we're matching the uh, colors that were in uh, ORS essentially, just to kind of give a visual indicator. Um, so beginning is this peach color, early intermediate is a yellow, and then we've got green, uh, just to kind of draw your eye to different points. And I'll get into some other interaction um, on some of the other reports. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move on to some of the other reports, but there's other view options in here. Essentially, these views just give you different columns of data below. Let's move on to the longitudinal roster. So this is showing student results over time and then the difference in that scale score. So it knows that I'm, the system knows that I'm part of this district and I've only tested one of the, the exam options, form C and D. So now there's a couple of additional pieces of data here. Uh, we've got the speaking diff scale score. So for example, um, we've got Irvin here. Now Irvin actually scored the same scale score with both test events. So there's a, di a difference of zero here. You'll also notice that the student has only tested once, the diff is zero because they only had one test event. But if we look at Esteban, Esteban had a scale score of 528 um, the first time, and then the second time, 445, and that's a difference of 83. And then you can also see the proficiency level change. He went from proficient to beginning. And the same um, interaction applies that I showed with the roster. You can uh, filter and sort on column headers here. 
if you kind of hover over the column header, there's three dots that will appear. If you click those, you can filter and sort. Once again, you can also download as a CSV, Excel, or PDF. And then one other piece um, here, we've, we've done a little bit of color uh, conditional formatting on the scale score as well, just to draw your eye. So we uh, did kind of this peachy orange color for the negative uh, changes and then blue for positive. And then the reading links roster, this is a new report. Um, this is essentially a roster of student Lexile scores. So in ORS, there was a static PDF, a reading links report for a single student. We have taken their Lexile information and put it in a roster format. So by student, what their Lexile score is and range. You can download a CSV, Excel, and PDF. And I'll get into more interaction with these filters when we get over to the summary reports. And the item roster, this is also a new report. So this roster is displaying the points possible and points earned across various skills area and strands. So we can see for list, the skill area is at the top and then within that, the different strands. And then what it's showing here is the item number and then in parentheses, the points that were possible for that item. And then the rows are the students um, that took that item and the points that they received. So you can see Aurelio um, item 32 was worth one point and Aurelio received one point. Item 34 was worth one point and Aurelio received zero. And the, these filters, if you wanted to look at just a particular skills area, for example, you can filter. So in this instance, maybe I just wanna focus on listening. I can click listening and done. And now I'm only focused on listening. You no longer see the other skill areas. Okay, one more student results report and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, student dashboard is also a new report for Lost Links. This was one that was not available in ORS. So this dashboard is for a single student and it answers the typical questions you might have about an individual student. So right up at the top, I can see the scale score in each of the skill areas for their most recent test event. And I'm gonna scroll down here. Get things loading while we're chatting. So the top part, the uh, line graph, shows you the skill area scores for uh, all of their test events. 
that we have for them. And this is the first time we're seeing this chart type, um, this line graph. So I wanted to showcase the ability to interact with a legend. So let's say uh, I just want to focus on one of these. I can double click. Let's do writing, for example. I'm hovering over the blue writing uh, dot. I can double click here on the side, and then I can just focus on writing. Double click again, and they all come back. I can single click to exclude. Single click again to bring it back. Uh, one of the other things, so you might be wondering, uh, how did my student do on the most recent test? How did they do on all of their tests? How did they do compared to the group? So we've got uh, average scale score here. Let me go out a little bit with this one. And then you also have the ability to drill down into strands. So if we go into writing, for example, these hyperlinks link out to the strands, strands level of detail. So in writing, for each of the test events, how did my student do compared to the group? And then the percent correct for each of the strands as well. And then one of the items, you know, a lot of times with rosters and stuff, those lend themselves better to tables. But once we get into more of the summary reports, we try to pair any visuals that we have with a table of data, just uh, for a couple of reasons. One, people take in information differently. Two, um, in case there's any additional analysis that needs to be done um, that might lend itself better in a, a table format. And so this table is essentially all of the data that we've seen. So for this student uh, by strand, um, their number correct out of the points possible and the resulting percentage correct. And this you can export as CSV, Excel, or PDF. The images uh, you can also export, but those just download as image, as images, PNG files. Christine, why don't we go ahead and uh, take our, or make our pivot here to uh, the summary results. And uh, Michelle, I don't know if there are any questions that we want to uh, try and address here, uh, or perhaps save uh, some for the end. Don't know what you're seeing in the uh, in the window there. Uh, there's quite a few questions. I don't know if you want to take a few now. Um, someone wants to know: Can I list all students at once, or does it have to be grade by grade? In general, uh, the answer would be yes, you can list all students at once. Uh, if there's a particular view or report uh, that we were looking at that had a, a grade uh, condition or as, as Christine stepped through it, uh, that, that uh, seemed to be a required field, uh, it does not uh, have to be. Uh, so we can uh, follow up just to confirm. But in general, yes, you'd be able to uh, really list out, uh, depending at the level uh, of, of user or uh, permissions you have uh, list out all student records uh, and results uh, within your uh, within your permission set or within your uh, org structure. Great. Here's another one. I think it's probably a quick answer, but will we have access to these reports year round? Short answer is yes. Great. Um, in the batch download, can you select all students without having to click on every single student, meaning is there a select all option? Uh, there is. Uh, in one of the, uh, you know, the demonstration, Christine showed how to uh, list out all of the students, but right next to the button uh, that she selected to uh, take that action, there was a download all uh, where it'll go ahead and and run that uh, query based on your parameters and give you a, a PDF of all the records without having to select individual students. 
Okay, why don't we just do this one and then we can do some more later, but uh, they would like you to show them again how to pull up the proficient students. Um, they're looking for a way to quickly find exit students. Did that make sense to you, Patrick? Uh, I know it's hard to, to get from the feedback. Christine, did that, uh, uh, Michelle described that make sense to you? I think so. So I think this was on the student roster report. Um, I'll just pull this up. I think this is what we were looking at. Yeah, we selected um, a beginner for the proficiency level? Right. Let's go with that uh, for now. And if that, if what Christine shows here on screen doesn't uh, specifically address your question, uh, you know, we can either follow back up with uh, uh, output from the uh, question box uh, or or another uh, Q&A session here in the moment. So in here, um, I filtered the speaking proficiency level. So I uh, hovered over the column header. Uh, three dots will pop up. You click the three dots, and then you get the filter, sort, and remove options. So I clicked filter. And then you could uh, sort by above, or filter by above proficient or any of these. And really able to do that on you know, any of the any of the scores, any of the categories, uh, anything within uh, the roster reports is actionable in that way, uh, based on that uh, that filter uh, and sort dialog. Okay, Christine, why don't we uh, step through summary reports and uh, maybe you know, headline level uh, on a few of them, uh, maybe. Start with the, if we could, uh, the uh, item reports. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that was of uh, interest to a number of our uh, participants here today. Sure. So I switched over to the summary results tab and we'll look at the item summary first. And we've split this out into a couple of tables. We've got one table for multiple choice items, and then we have another for constructed response. So in this table, we're displaying essentially a summary of item performance. So for a grade one in this skills area and strand listening, and then social, intercultural, and instructional communication. Um, we have rosters available by skill area or strands. And then each row in here is for a specific item number. We've got the total number who tested that item and the uh, percent who got the item correct, percent of those that total number tested who got the item correct, the points that were possible for this item, and then we also have the student response breakdown. How many responded A, B, C, D, or no response? And then the percentage of points that they earned. So 11% 11, 11 earned zero points, 89% earned one point. And we do have the ability to drill into a roster. So if we're looking at the, um, 101 kids who who took this item, I can drill in further to that roster. And as Christine does that, I know there were some uh, questions uh, or observations of a, a bit of a disconnect with the item number and how it is displaying uh, in the report. Uh, we do have uh, some work that the, the team has undertaken uh, here to update that. Uh, essentially, long story short, uh, uh, practice items were being counted uh, when uh, you know maybe makes more logical sense to uh, not include them uh, in the item reference. So we will be uh, taking a two-step uh, approach to uh, provide some more information here. One, uh, a little bit of a cheat sheet uh, for the crosswalk between the uh, numbering from the the form of the book uh, in the quick links, 
uh, in advance of the uh, roster itself or the uh, summary itself being updated uh, with the, uh, the correct uh, item numbers. So uh, expect more information on that uh, over the next several weeks. Thanks, Pat. And so this is essentially that same item roster that we looked at over on the student results tab, but we just drilled into it here at the summary level. And then we also have a little bit of conditional formatting here. Again, just a chance for your eye to kind of gravitate towards some of these. We just put sample conditional formatting on. So percent correct, uh, zero to 49 is orange, 50 to 74 is green, and then uh, 75 and up is blue. And then the constructed response table is somewhat similar, but because you're dealing with multiple multi-point items, uh, there isn't a percent correct per se, because if you have three points and you only got one, is that wrong? If you got three points and you only got two right, is that wrong or right? Um, so it looks just a little bit different in that we have average points earned. So for item number 12, uh, 103 students took this item. It was worth three points, and the average points earned for that item was 2.27. And then you can also see the uh, response points. So 10 students, 10% uh, of students got zero points, 8% of students got one, 28% of students got two points, three, and four. And once again, you can download each of these tables as a CSV, Excel, or PDF. And I, th I think that's all that I wanted to show on this, uh, on this report. So I'll move on to the skills area summary report. We'll go with the summary view first. There's also a disaggregate view. I'll go through that. So we've got more charts uh, involved in the summary reports. As these things load. And then I'm also gonna demonstrate a little bit more with these secondary filters. Um, and there's one option here too that's more applicable because we have more things on the screen. We've got more charts and tables here. So here, uh, you have the option to download as an entire PDF. So this takes all of the charts, all of the tables, and downloads it as a single PDF. With the rosters that we were reviewing, it was typically one table per page. So it would be essentially what you would get if you downloaded it as a PDF. So here we're looking at the proficiency level breakdown um, for districts and schools within that district for each of the skill areas. And then here, we're looking at the mean skill score um, at the district for each of the skill areas, and then each school as well within that district. And then at the bottom, we have a, a table of information, uh, all of the data that's essentially above, um, the mean skill score and then the proficiency level breakdown. And we also have the ability to drill to a roster. So for this school speaking, I can get to that roster right here. And you can see their scale score and their proficiency level. And then I showed, um, I showed how to interact with a legend on the other report, so I'll skip over that. Um, the org type. So right now we're looking at districts and schools, but maybe 
for the analysis that I'm trying to do. I'm not really concerning myself with the district performance. So here I'm able to take that out. So maybe I just want to focus on school performance. Maybe I want to compare a couple of schools. Christine, just in the interest of time, uh, giving Michael an opportunity to cover his topic as well, why don't we, uh, with this last view here, uh, wrap up the, uh, the demonstration, and then if there is a few minutes at the end, we can come back around for any questions or, or additional uh, view or two. Okay, sure, sounds great. So you'll notice that we're no longer looking at the district. We're only looking at the schools, school one, school two, for each of the proficiency levels. And there is a scroll bar here as well to see all the results. And these secondary filters right here affect all of the charts on the page. So this chart, we're only looking at schools, and here we no longer have the district first, we're just looking at the schools. And same thing in the table. We had districts and schools in the table before, and now we only have schools. And as far as highlighting the interactions, uh, I think that's really all all that I had. Um, there are a couple of different views, but as I mentioned, that just gives you different uh, data points. So Michelle, do we want to pause here for um, some questions on the summary results? Why don't we go ahead and uh, pass the ball back over to uh, Michael, let him uh, make sure he can cover off his topics and see if there is any uh, time left. Okay. Okay, and then I just want to mention to everyone that's on the call that um, we're going to, we have, we know there's a lot of questions um, and we were, we, we are definitely going to uh, provide answers to all the questions. We know who's asked the questions, so even if we don't have time during this webinar, someone will get back to you in an email and there will also be a, a Q&A document that's produced. Hey, Michael, you should be all set. Okay, thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, it's nice to see a lot of familiar names um, attending, and I hope you and your family are all safe. And I certainly look forward to being in person with you again in, in the upcoming school year. Um, so as far as our portion, EdSight, um, I know many of you are already experts on that, but I'm going to want to highlight something that's new in EdSight. Um, so first of all, when we're, when we're talking about what EdSight provides, um, it does provide the aggregate results that you can find on DRC's uh, Insight uh, reporting system. So we're talking about you can find participation uh, rates, you can find um, information on proficiency status for those four subtests, as well as the uh, five composite scores. Um, you can also find mastery. Um, and the other thing is you can also find uh, growth uh, results. And these um, are about the CSDE's growth model. And this is the only place you can find those results um, uh, at the aggregate and at the student level. So including their targets, this individual student targets and all the results um, in, uh, in uh, EdSight. Um, I will stop for a second and say, unfortunately, our network is down, so I can't give you a live demonstration of what's in EdSight, but uh, fortunately I did prepare some slides ahead of time so I can show some of this information. Um, in doing this presentation, I was asked not so much to focus on the aggregate, but really to focus more on the second bullet that's there on, on the slide, the L status, finding the student's L status. Um, 
and for me in 13 years of working as part of the L team with the State Department, I think my biggest eye-opening moments were around this issue. Um, you, those of you that are veterans remember in days of yore when you used to have to report, you would get your last link's results from CTB and then you'd be responsible to report those results to the State Department. And I'd collect that information and I would do some checks of that, of what got reported with what we have in our student databases. And I started to notice discrepancies between the number of scores I'd get and the number of students that I would think were registered in your district as else. Um, and in looking at sp specific student cases, I would see across our different collections of students in L in one district, and then they transfer, and then they're no longer in L. Um, and that led me to reach out to some of you who are on this call and try and understand, you know, what's happening here. And you all educated me on the difficulty that you face with these new students. And when we're talking about ELs, we're talking about a highly mobile population and the pressure you're under when there's a federal law with two weeks to try and identify whether a student is an L or not. The challenges that you face that for whatever reason, a lot of times that information doesn't travel well with the student. Parents for many valid reasons may not be upfront about the L status of their student, of their child. Um, following up with other districts and maybe not hearing from them because everybody's busy. So this leaves you in a difficult position of trying to figure out whether this new student is an L or not. Um, and then even bigger issues uh, were that there wasn't a common understanding of who was an L across districts. It wasn't until 2017 that we had one standard identification process for an L. Um, and on the other end of it, while there was always has been or there has been an exit, sta uh, status, uh, exit standard for many years, that wasn't always comprehensively applied across districts. Um, so at both ends, whether a student was an L or not, was always it could be inconsistent from district to district. And given the mobility of this population, that becomes a particular problem where students end up having gaps in their service, or unfortunately, some kids would fall through the cracks and not get their services at all. Um, and I know like that's a concern that our L team has shared for many years. We talk about this all the time, and I know it's a concern on your part too. Um, so then how did we address this? I mean, first of all, we tried to create a standard for identifying the Ls, who is an L in 2017. We've also really tried to provide a lot of information and get everybody on the same page as far as exit status for Ls. But that still leaves the challenge of, you've got this new kid, how do you know whether they're an L or not? Um, and over time, I know a lot of you reach out, have reached out to me. And in fact, this morning, I have a couple of requests in my Outlook box asking about the L status of students. But really the goal here is to give you tools so that you can look and figure out who's an L on your own. Um, I'm gonna skip a, uh, ahead a couple of slides and look at what's been provided in EdSight Secure. And I know many of you are experts on this already, but just as sort of uh, sort of a refresher. Most of you are familiar with this, the last links reports in EdSight Secure, um, where you can search an individual student's level and get their information when it comes to last links. You can find out all their information as far as their proficiency levels, you can look for their mastery status, and you can look at their growth. However, there's a limitation in this. While this was a great first step by the EdSight team, the limitation here is the Ls who show up are those who took the last links and took the last links in the last four years. But you know that there's many Ls who can't take the last links. Either they were alternate students or they weren't registered during the last links testing window or for whatever reason they weren't tested. Those kids aren't gonna show up here even though they are an L. So while this is a great resource and a tremendous first step towards identifying those students, there were some limitations around it. Now recently, 
the EdSight team has built a tremendous, tremendous report that is so helpful. And I think a lot of you are really going to love because it's really going to get to answer this problem or this issue of trying to find your kids and whether they're an L or not. It's called the Student Summary Report, and it's available again in EdSight Secure. It, it doesn't provide aggregate information. It provides individual student level information, and you really got to think of it almost like an electronic student record. Um, so when you go in there, and I, I didn't include a, a navigating to the report. It's once you go in, you can find the report. It's listed among the reports because my uh, interface is going to be different from yours. And this is all um, this is all fake student data that we're going to be looking at. So when you get into the student summary report for your district, you have the ability to search by school name, by grade, pull up all students. You can look by the date the student was enrolled. And I think this is going to be a tremendous uh, tool for many of you, especially those of you that get a lot of kids coming and going. Because what this will allow you to do instead of uh, it, it'll, if unfortunately I can't click and open it, but it gives you date ranges where you get to look and see who are new students in your district. So you can look at kids in the last week, in the last 10 days, whatever you can set. You can set your time and see who are these kids. So if you were, say, the data manager for your L department, what you can do is maybe like once a week or maybe every two weeks, make a point of going in here and looking. Well, you wouldn't want to do two weeks because you've got to identify the kids. Maybe every week and see and, and pick new kids in the last seven days. And you'll get to, and you can look at the individual records for those students. You can also search for a specific student by their SACID or their last name. And when you do find a student, when you open up their student tab, you'll get general, first of all, general information about the student. You'll find out the grade, the age, their gender, um, their special ed status, um, but you'll also find out whether they're an English learner or not. And this is telling you currently whether they're an L or not. Um, but you can also click on, there are other tabs here. You can click on the tab for enrollment history. And here, this is the advantage for the student summary report over the last links report when you're trying to find whether a student is an L or not. Because what you can find here is their English learner status at particular times in point when the uh, State Department does its collection. So you can see when the student was an L, but you can also find out what was their program history. So regardless of whether a student took the last links or not, if they were an L, you can go back in time and find and find this L status. And this data goes back beyond the four years that are in the last links reports. So this is a tremendous advantage, a tremendous step forward over the last links reports in terms of trying to find whether a student is an L or not. It's a really terrific, I think, a lot of you are going to uh, see and, and use this because it's, it really gets to um, being able to find um, L status. This some student summary also contains last links history for every L. So you can go back in time and you can see proficiency levels. You can see a scale scores. You can also find out, did the student meet mastery? You can look at their growth information. So all that information that's there in the in the last links reports in Insight Secure is here too. So you're not only you're not losing anything, you're gaining in addition to the scores, you're gaining their program history and their L status over time. Um, let me actually go back to that slide for just a second. So uh, two other, ta other tabs that you can have for the students, you can get attendance history. Um, 
and you can also get resources. So it's information that can give you, there are FAQs for using the student summary report. There are links to other reports in EdSight, as well as how to use those other reports. So this is tremendous. And, and um, this particular student, because they're in second grade, um, in terms of assessment tabs, they really just have the last link's information. But if the student was older, there would be a, a tab where you could find their information as far as, say, Smart or Balanced or SAT. So you can get a student's academic assessment information as well as their last link's history. So jumping ahead, one thing I just I, 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 I failed to mention when looking at the last links report, if you're going to use the last links report to try and find a student, uh, uh, whether they were an L or not, um, just some things that I want to remind you, although I, most of you remember this, you're going to click, click on the student level data um, for school year. A tip is you've got four years of data. Click all the boxes because a student may have uh, irregularly taken the last links. They might have taken it one year, but not other years. So click all four years. The other thing, always click on current district because this is going to give you all the kids who are currently registered with your district as opposed to just the kids who you tested. So always click on the current district. And you have the option here as well as in the student summary of either searching by the student SACID or by their name. So really, for for our purposes here, and I see we're at twelve o'clock, um, I would I would stop here and and uh, turn it over to questions. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, we have quite a few questions. Um, so this one, Michael, for you. Is this available now for incoming ninth graders going to a new high school not in their district? Okay, so yes. Um, if the student is registered with you, then yes, you can go into the student summary and you can find them. So that's the that's the catch there is that they have to be registered with you for uh, for you to be able to find them. Um, but yeah, it's as long as they're registered with your district, yes, you can find them. Uh, Marco, do you know when we anticipate growth targets to be released on Ed site? The goal is we've uh, we've started loading um, this year's last links data into the warehouse. We're in the process of cleaning that data, and the goal is to get everything up by say mid June. Um, so those targets will be there hopefully second week of June. Thanks. Um, this one, I'm not sure if it's for you or for Megan or, but how do you get to the home language survey to send home to parents? This also includes the reading section. Janet or Megan, do you want to take that? Uh, uh, this is Megan. Hello. Um, the home language survey um, is accessible through the English learners page under the documents and forms tab. Um, you would scroll down and it's available there. Um, there are several different languages um, in which it's been translated um, as well as the original in English. Um, I'm not entirely clear on what the question is with regard to the reading um, that may be referring to the screener for the student perhaps just remember as I think you know I, just a quick reminder the home language survey if there's a language other than English that would indicate that the student needs to be screened that would not indicate necessarily that the student was in fact an L it would just that one or more references to another language other than English would mean the student needed to be screened and that screener does have um, speaking, listening, reading, and writing items. So if I didn't address that question, um, I would be happy to answer it um, if you can give me a little more context there. Okay, and as I mentioned, um, the attendees' questions will be part of the report that I'll share with um, the presenters, and then they can follow up with you directly as well um, if we don't get to your questions. Uh, 
This one is about having trouble accessing um, some of the reports. So they're trying to run the re results area summary. They, but they're saying they're unauthorized. Should they contact DRC if they're having technical issues? Uh, the short answer is yes, please. Uh, and the customer support team can troubleshoot whether it is a uh, permissions uh, challenge or, or exactly what is uh, going on with report access. So uh, yes, please contact uh, the support uh, number or uh, email address. Thanks. And if you're having trouble accessing EdSite Secure, um, you can email one of us and we can um, help you through that. We are having problems with EdSite today, so I, you wouldn't be able to get in even if you wanted to, but um, if, if that's an issue, you're, ha you're having problems getting in or you don't have a password, we can let you know what you need to do. Um, so here's another question. What exact proficiency score form do we send to parents? Is sure. that a CSCE question or? I, Michelle, this is Abe. Uh, I'll, I'll take a shot at it, but I, I'm also going to lean on my colleagues to uh, hold on one second. I want to. I think it, this is in reference to uh, <laughs> reference to what Christine had showed at the beginning. There, that is a report that uh, it's really up to the district to send and uh, the. We're not requiring you to send it or anything like that. It's a it's uh, made available as a um, as a resource, but it's not like we we it's not like for instance Smarter Balance. We develop these uh, these pretty uh, ISRs to send out, and we ask that you send those. This is sort of uh, a resource that you can use if you want. I don't know. Anybody else want to add to that? I guess not. Okay. Okay. Um, this one is for DRC. Is there a way for a district administrator to batch download PDF student reports for all students in the district? Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, the uh, parameters that they select uh, should allow that if there is a, a scenario uh, that the uh, individual asking the question encounters uh, where they seem to have difficulty or, or they're not able to accomplish um, what they're, they're trying to. Um, I think uh, please include uh, that information uh, in the question uh, and we can uh, reach out directly or uh, ultimately contact uh, DRC customer service uh, for that as well. Uh, but in short, uh, yes. Uh, and, and again, depending on the, the structure within the district, uh, the, the filter selections or options might be a bit different. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, Abe, how much longer do you want to go? Um, there are more questions, but we are beyond noon. I don't know what yeah. you want to do. Yeah, Michelle. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, 12.06, and I just, in the uh, to respect everybody's time here, uh, as Michelle alluded to, what we're going to try to do is take a shot at, we won't take a shot, we will answer your questions that came in uh, in a written format, um, and we'll try to get back to you uh, as soon as possible regarding those. And what we'll try to do is uh, we can identify who asked the question, so we'll actually shoot the Q&A out to, so if Michael had a question, we're going to make sure to email it directly to Michael, uh, that way you'll have an answer. Uh, give us a little time because I know uh, there are a lot of questions. So, um, so I think uh, I think we will uh, end things here. I want to thank uh, Michelle, Patrick, Christine, Michael. Thank you for uh, presenting, and then also uh, Janet and Megan. Thank you for uh, being here to help us to support us as well. Um, and thank you for attending the webinar today. Stay safe. Uh, if you have any questions. We are still uh, uh, attending to all our emails and phones. Our offices are closed, but we are working from home. So uh, please reach out to us if you have a question. Uh, thanks again for attending today.